Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 17 full tutorial series. This is part 9 of the series. Today we are going to talk about very very important uh, concept in Angular which is modular architecture. Also at the same time this episode is extremely important because I am going to talk about some of the breaking changes in Angular 17 which are different than other Angular versions. If you are a beginner, if you are an expert developer on previous Angular versions, some of the concepts that have changed in Angular 17 may really shock you and hence it's very very important to stay up to date. Let's start. Like I said, this episode we will focus on modular architecture. At the same time, I'm going to talk about no more ng module. That is all and much more in this tutorial. Let's get started. All right, so Angular's core fundamental approach was a modular approach architecture, which means this was the cornerstone of its design philosophy, promoting efficient, organized and maintainable code. The approach not only aids in scalability, but enhances the overall development process, especially when you have a distributed team. One of the most fundamental building block of Angular application is ng module. Now, if you're coming from Angular, 14, 15, 12, 10, 11 or any previous versions you would find something called ng module. Now a module encapsulates components, directives, pipes, services, routes and much more. But Angular 17 onwards everything is standalone. All right. I'll show you that in code also in just a bit but before that let me cover app module for you. Every Angular application used to have at least one module and that is called the root module in most cases it used to be app module okay remember why I said this because till angular 16 everything was app module or ng module but now if you look at the angular 17 project which is what we are building a crew management system we did the installation if you expand the source folder and app folder you will not see anything called app module anymore. All right. So that's one of the most fundamental groundbreaking change because in all the previous episodes or previous angular versions that you have seen will have app module, which was the main starting root module. But if you open the main.ts now, it says app component and not app module. All right which means the bootstrapping happens directly at the component level directly and not as a module. Talking about the component itself, if you open the basic default app component.ts file, you would see this line which says standalone is true. What is this? What is a standalone component? Everything will cover in detail as we progress. For today, what you need to know is that Angular 17 onwards there is no default. Let me make that notes for you. Architecture. All right. Now, one of the most important things that you should know is that in Angular 17, no more ng module, no more default app module. Okay, you will not see these with whereas in previous versions of angular you would see that right now everything Everything is stand alone Okay, which means it can be injected anywhere and used anywhere Okay, remember that So that's one of the most fundamental change in angular 17 onwards Okay, we will touch base more as we move along for now understand the modular because when you are working in projects most likely they are on previous versions of angular you will see ng module you'll see app module but so you should know what that does talking about which there are feature modules now feature modules are nothing but in every application you would have some modules it can be as simple as users authentication login template say payments credit cards, profiles, etc, etc. If you talk about an e-commerce application, you can have modules like orders or payments, 
cancellations, returns, shopping, products, details, etc. Those all can be called a feature module. Lazy loading. Like in previous Angular versions, you would also see a concept of lazy loading, which is still supported. Okay, remember that also. I am not saying that they are not supported. So modules are still very much supported and can be used just like any previous version. Okay, so don't get confused that it will not work. It will work just like previous version. You can still create a module, you can still use them and all. Shade modules. Shade modules allows us for declaration of components, directives, pipes that can be used between various modules. Again, if you are using standalone, you don't need to create shade modules. A core module is often used to hold singleton services, global components. Again, this is a design philosophy of how you want to organize your code. Module imports can import other modules just like, um, you know, common directives, NGF and NG4 are coming from common module, etc. Service scoping, services provided in Angular modules can be scoped to that particular module. Declarables, components, directive pipes are considered declarables, but must be declared in exactly one NG module. This was before NG standalone was not introduced. Okay, so now whatever you do, so all your components are standalone, which means they can directly be used anywhere you want. All right, NG module providers, like I said, services can be provided in modules, making them available. We can do that just fine with standalone itself. All right. A lot of Angular modules, like if you see external modules, if you open your package.json, you would see Angular modules like animations, CDK, common, compiler, core, these are all modules, right, which are integrated. So it is still very much using modules internally, and we can continue to use them to extend to other libraries as well. Last thing that I want to tell you is the module federation, which is also called micro frontends. So Angular supports module federation, which is enabling large applications to be broken down into smaller, more manageable, easy to use sub applications or also called micro frontends. Okay, that's all you should know from modular architecture. That's all you should know from the changes that have happened in Angular 17. Okay, do write to me if you have any doubts, any questions, any comments on this. We can discuss further in the comment section. I hope you like. Please continue this series as I'll be covering a lot of breaking changes that are introduced in Angular 17, which you should know as a developer. In the next episode, we start learning in detail about the components. We'll also learn standalone, how to generate and much, much more. So continue your learning with me. Do let me know if you have any doubts. Thank you so much for liking my tutorials and supporting me and my channel. See you in the next episode.